Why do you need a speed controller? Well, for controlling the startup for one thing, here's what happens if you just throw a switch. We've seen motors that have torn themselves free from their mounts and stripped gear teeth due to the extremely high torque that electric motors can generate. The speed controller will allow you to have smooth control over the acceleration and deceleration of a powerful motor like this. In the 1930s, speed controllers used to look like this. They used big resistors to reduce the power going to the motor. That wasted a lot of power though, and nowadays we use a technique called pulse width modulation. We use special transistors called MOSFETs, and we switch these on and off at around 20,000 times a second. This controller here, which is our Porter model, can, can actually handle the same power as this one from the 1930s. If we connect an oscilloscope to the motor, we can see the power going on, on and off. At low speed, we have very, very short on pulses, and at high speed, we have much longer on pulses. At half speed, we can see that the on and off times are about equal. We call this 50% duty cycle, and if you measure the output with a voltmeter, you can see that it's averaged out to about half the input voltage. If you just want to control small motors, say around 20 amps, then we can do that with just two MOSFETs, as in this Porter 5 controller. If you want to control currents up to 300 amps, then we can just add more MOSFETs, like this 4QD300. This has 24 MOSFETs in it. The other important component in a controller is the main capacitor. These help the controller fill in the gaps in the on and off switching. If you don't have enough of these, then they can overheat and fail. They also get hot if your battery leads are too long or too thin.